Peace and love, brothers and sisters. This is the Prince of Pan-Africanism, Dr. Umar Johnson, King Kong Consciousness. And what I would like to do today, what I would like to do today, what I would like to do today is I want to do a psychological analysis on some of the philosophy and opinions of the Honorable Frederick Douglass. What I want to do today is I want to do a psychological analysis on some of the philosophy and opinions of the Honorable Frederick Augustus Washington Bailey Jr. You all know that I'm a blood relative of Frederick Douglass. You all know that I'm a blood relative of the great one. Okay. Get those volumes turned up. Okay. I just turned the volume up. Instagram, y'all should be able to hear me now. Okay, Facebook, y'all should be able to hear me now. Okay, volume is low on Instagram. Volume is low on Instagram. What about now, Instagram? Y'all shouldn't be low because I got y'all up. Instagram, what the volume is? Can you hear? Instagram, give me a black fist if you can hear. Very low, I don't know why. The volume is up. Okay, you can hear? Okay. Can y'all hear Instagram? Facebook, y'all can hear, right? Facebook, give me a fist. It's okay. All right. I want to do a psychological analysis on some of the philosophy and opinions of the Honorable Frederick Douglass. Four times great grand cousin. We are descendants of the same grandparents, Isaac and Betsy Bailey. Rest in peace to them. Frederick Douglass was the first cousin to my four times great grandfather, Stephen Henry Bailey, the same Stephen that he mentions by name in his autobiography. Shout out to the donors. I'm going to read some more donors. Karana Pinkins, $20. Thank you. Sister Karana, thank you. Anyone who wants to make a donation while we're live, please go to your cash app, make a donation to the school, dollar sign FDMG school. Go to the cash app, make a donation to the school dollar sign fdmg school go to the cash app make a donation to the school fundraiser we're trying to rehab four buildings okay dollar sign fdmg school if you're having trouble on instagram go to facebook if you're having trouble hearing me go to facebook dr umar ifatunde if you're having trouble hearing me go to facebook dr umar ifatunde okay the title of this piece is called we must become independent this was about black independence. One of the reasons I selected this writing of the Honorable Frederick Douglass is because it is so very similar to the philosophy and opinion of the most honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey. Team Pan-African is about black independence. Dr. Umar Johnson, my whole life is about black independence. Being unapologetically African is about becoming independently African. We must be unapologetically African, but then we must also become independently African. You understand? So this piece by Frederick Douglass is about black independence. He delivered this in 1848. Slavery was still legal and practiced in America. 1848. This was in Cleveland, Ohio. Shout out to Cleveland. I was there two weeks ago. Shout out to Dayton. I was there two weeks ago. Frederick says, quote, in the northern states, we are not slaves to individuals, not personal slaves, yet in many respects, we are slaves of the community. I want you all to think about that for a minute. Frederick Douglass says we're not slaves to people anymore. We are slaves to white community. Let's think about that. You want to know why your children are miseducated? Because we are slaves to white folk. You want to know why our people are unemployed? We are still enslaved to the community of white people. You want to know why our men are unemployed while our women are being beat by the police? Because we are slaves not to individual white folks, but to the white power structure as a whole. No longer slaves to individual Europeans, but slaves to the white power structure as a whole. Slavery is a synonym for dependency. Slavery is a synonym 
for dependency. I was on a radio interview last night. I was on a radio interview last night with two good brothers. I was on a radio interview last night with two good brothers. Two good brothers. And we were talking about black independence. We were discussing black independence. And they were talking about politics as a means to liberation. And what I told those brothers is politics will never deliver black people to liberation. See, we have to understand white supremacy. What it is, how it operates. Rest in peace to Queen Mother Dr. Francis Cress Wilson. That was white supremacy 101. Dr. Umar Johnson, white supremacy 2.0. Nothing the oppressor creates for you will ever liberate you. Nothing the oppressor does for you will never liberate you. I want to be clear. Nothing the oppressor supports for you would ever liberate you. If they gave it to you, it will not be sufficient to deliver liberation. If they bought it for you, it will not be su sufficient to deliver liberation. If they support it, if they support it, you know it is absolutely ineffective as a strategy of liberation. Okay? Now, Eddie Jones, you just said that I'm making Masonic hand gestures. That's what Eddie Jones just said. See, Brother Eddie, people like you are part of the problem. Because you don't have any evidence to support your claim that Dr. Umar Johnson is a Mason. But you're saying when I move my hands like this, I'm throwing out Masonic gestures. This is what you claim. My hands are not moving because I'm a Mason. Because I am not, have never been, and am not interested in it. Much respect to my Masonic brothers and sisters. I don't take issue with all of them categorically. Some of them do the work of the people systematically i don't think they've done anything lately for black people as a movement but there are individual masons who do good work so i will not castigate the entire masonic order but i am not one and i'm not interested in being one i told y'all this a million times obviously brother eddie doesn't understand this see when i tell you that i'm not a mason when i tell you that i'm not a greek when I tell you I'm not an elk, when I tell you that I'm not a boule, when I tell you I'm not a bourgeoisie, when I tell you I belong to no secret society whatsoever, you have trouble believing that. And the reason you have trouble believing that is you're not used to black men with doctoral degrees trained in white instance you're not used to professional black men being this unapologetically african you assume that i must have been given a license to tell the truth from some secret society i don't belong to any secret societies getting back to the message i am not against voting i am not against voting I'm against black people who believe voting is going to significantly change anything for us. That's what I'm against. You can vote. I will never stop you from voting because it doesn't hurt us. And it damn sure don't help us. I will never stop you from voting because it doesn't hurt us, but it damn sure don't help us. I'm not against voting. I'm simply saying that I'm not voting unless I have a reason. I'm not voting for anyone unless I have a reason. Okay? That's all I'm saying. Okay? Black people got this sickness. See, integration is a mental illness. And any integration solution is also a mental illness. Do you understand? See, any solution that someone brings to you for your liberation, if it is not logical... If it does not make logical sense, it is automatically pathological. Stay with me. This is a psychological analysis. Stay with me. This is a psychological analysis. I'm going to say it again. 
anybody who brings you a so-called solution to the black predicament, if that solution is not logical, it is automatically pathological. Let me give you an example. If someone tells you that integrating with our oppressor is a solution, that's not, that doesn't make logical sense. The same people that enslaved you, Jim Crowed you, segregated you, miseducated you, okay? If you force your way into their life, they're going to love you. That's illogical. And because it is not logical, it is automatically what? Psychopathological. Our good ancestor, Dr. Bobby Wright, a Garveyite psychologist from Chicago, Dr. Bobby Wright, a Garveyite psychologist from Chicago. Dr. Bobby Wright wrote a book called The Psychopathic Racial Personality. The Psychopathic Racial Personality. You will read that book in the next Ifa Tunde University class. You will read that book in September at the next Ifa Tunde University class. The book was called The Psychopathic Racial Personality. But we have to talk about the psychopathic black integrationist personality. That's what I want to, the psychopathic black integrationist personality. Because we have some psychopathological integrationists. You have black people who will destroy the whole community for the right to live with white folks. You have black people that will destroy the whole community for the right to sleep with white folks. You have black people who will destroy the entire community because they have a pathological addiction to white approval and participation. A pathological addiction to white approval and participation. But let's go back to what the great ancestor said. Frederick Douglass in his wisdom said, we are not slaves to individuals. We are slaves to the community. He said, however, far enough removed from the actual condition of the slave to make us largely responsible for their continued enslavement. We are far enough removed from the condition of the slave to make us responsible for their continued enslavement or their speedy deliverance from the chain. For in the proportion which we shall rise in the scale of human improvement, in that proportion do we augment the probabilities of a speedy emancipation for our enslaved fellow countrymen. What is Frederick Douglass saying? He's saying the same thing that the Honorable Marcus Mag Messiah Garvey said. If we want to liberate black people, if we want to help our brothers and sisters who are hardest hit by the white power structure, we have to unite and build a truly independent black reality. That is the solution. A truly independent black Africa. A truly independent black America. A truly independent black Caribbean. A truly independent Central and South America. Colombia, I will see you. Black Colombia, stand up. Brazil, I will see you. Black Brazil, stand up. Bermuda, Bahamas, Jamaica, I will see you soon. Stand up. Gambia, Ghana, I will see you soon. Stand up. Black Brussels, Belgium. Brussels, Belgium, I will see you soon. Long live Patrice Lumumba. Long live Patrice Lumumba, the greatest in Africa since Garvey. Now, just so y'all understand, when we talk about black independence, whether it's the Honorable Marcus Garvey, the Honorable Frederick Douglass, or the Prince of Pan-Africanism, black independence is the solution. One of the brothers on the radio show last night mentioned a concept known as power sharing. Power sharing. This is a false concept. There's no such thing as power sharing when you deal with racism because white people don't share power. That's the second rule of racism. White people do not share power. So any Negro who says we can share the power, any Negro who tells you we can share the power is a Negro who doesn't understand white power. White people don't share power with blacks. 
In fact, no culture shares power. Chinese ain't trying to share no power. Arabs ain't trying to share no power. Jews ain't trying to share no power. Mexicans ain't trying to share no power. Latinos ain't trying to share no power. Nobody's trying to share power but black folks. There's no such thing as power sharing. No such thing. And why are we looking to share power with our oppressor when we could take our $2 trillion? Why are we looking to share power with our oppressor when we can take our $2 trillion and create an independent black reality of our own that we control? Explain that to me. This is what I asked my brother last night. I said, here's my question. We are 65 years after the landmark Supreme Court Brown versus Board of Education Supreme Court decision. May 17th, 1954. That's tomorrow, brother. Isn't today the 16th? Isn't today the 16th? Let me check. Yes. Today is the 16th. Tomorrow is 65 years of school desegregation. Tomorrow is 65 years of school desegregation. And after 65 years of school desegregation, black children are doing worse today than we were doing in 1954. Black children are doing worse today than we were doing in 1954. Let me explain something. I have a list of black inventions. I have a list of black inventions. Listen to this. Air conditioning unit, 1949. The Almanac, 1791. The automatic cutoff switch, 1839. The automatic fishing device, 1899. The automatic gear shift, 1932. The baby buggy, 1899. The bicycle frame, we invented, October the 10th. The biscuit cutter, November the 30th, 1875. Blood plasma bag, Charles Drew, 1945. The cell phone, 1971. That was invented by Henry Sampson, the cell phone. The chamber commode, 1897. The clothes dryer, 1862. The curtain rod, 1889. The doorknob, 1878. The doorstop, 1878. The dustpan, 1897. The egg beater, 1884. The elevator, 1867. The electric lamp, 1882. The eye protector, 1880. The fire escape, 1878. That's right. Give it up for our ancestors. Widow's fist that. Widow's heart sack. Give it up for our ancestors. Give it up for our ancestors who invented all of this. The folding bed, 1899. The folding chair, 1889. The fountain pen, 1890. The furniture caster, 1878. The gas mask, 1914. The golf tee, 1899. The guitar, 1886. Can I ask y'all a question? Can I ask y'all a question? Can I ask y'all a question? Facebook and Instagram, I want to ask y'all a question. I just gave you 20 to 30 significant inventions significant black invent the only one after 1954 was the cell phone the only one after school desegregation was the cell phone here is my question black america here is my question if we invented all of that before school desegregation and we haven't we haven't invented nearly half of that since school desegregation, what did we gain from school desegregation? Our children have gotten dumber. That's right. Our children have gotten dumber. And that's a scientific fact. That's a scientific fact. As the black child increases in school grade in America, their average IQ goes down. From kindergarten through 12th grade graduation, as the black child increases as they go up in grade the black child goes down in intelligence scores explain that to me if you are learning more 
why is your IQ going less? If you are learning more, why is your IQ going less? We did better when we were segregated. We invented more when we were segregated. In the dilapidated, underfunded black schoolhouse, black children excelled better than they do now. And why? Why did we do better in segregated schools than we do now in integrated schools? Why did we do better in segregated schools than we do now in integrated schools? Why did we do better? You know why? Because black education prior to school desegregation, black education prior to school desegregation taught the black child how to maximize their intellectual ca capability and capacity. The black schools taught black kids how to think. Stay with me. The black schools taught the black child how to tap into the intelligence. The black schools taught the black child how to bring forth their God-given inner potential. That's why we invented all of this. Let me keep on going. Guitar, 1886. Some of y'all don't even know that the guitar was invented by a black man. Some of y'all don't even know that the guitar was invented by a black man. Some of y'all don't even know that the guitar was invented by a black man. Hairbrush, 1800s. Hand stamp, 1883. Horseshoe, 1885. Ice cream scooper. Ice cream scooper, 1897. Improved the sugar making process, 1846. Insect destroyer gun. Did y'all know we invented the gun to destroy insects? 1899. The ironing board, 1887. The keychain. The keychain. The keychain, 1894. The lantern, 1884. The lawnmower, 1899. We invented the lawnmower. And I have to go buy a lawnmower this weekend so we can mow the grass at the Frederick Douglass and Marcus Garvey Academy. I have to go buy a lawnmower today so we can mow the grass at the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy. I'm not going to take no calls right now. Keep the donations coming on the cash app. I'm going to read off more donations in a minute. Come on, y'all. Let's get these schools ready. I can't wait to have a grand opening at FDMG so we can do some more of this. I can't wait to have a grand opening at FDMG so we can do some more of this. Because black children have so much more to give the world than basketball. Black children have so much more to give the world than football. Black children got so much more to give the world than rap music. Black children got so much more to give the world than fake hair. Black children got so much more to give the world than sports and entertainment. We need some more of this. It's called black excellence. It's called Black Excellence. The Frederick Douglass and Marcus Garvey RBG International Leadership Academy for what? Black Excellence. Let me keep on reading these uh, inventions. Let's keep on going. Lunch Pail, 1887. Lubricating Cup, 1895. The Lock, the 1800s. The Lawn Sprinkler, 1897. We, we invented all this before desegregation. Why did we need to desegregate the schools? Why did we need that? Do you realize that sending black children into hostile white schools is a form of post-traumatic stress disorder? You got black children. How can you learn when you're being victimized by the instructor? How can you learn when you're being victimized by the instructor? Our children are being traumatized by white teachers and white classmates. Traumatized by white teachers and white classmates. Do you see what's going on right now? What are they talking about right now? Right now, they're talking about there's a big problem because white teachers 
don't know how to teach slavery to black children. There's a big problem because white teachers don't know how to teach slavery to white children. Hold on right now. Shango is telling me to get my Shango sword. I'm going to put down the sword of Ifa. I'm going to put down the sword of Ifa. I got to get my Shango sword. Shango and Ogun, we back. I had to get the Shango sword. Frederick Douglass told me to come and get the Shango sword. Shango, Ogun. Now, they said white teachers don't know how to teach slavery to black children. Now, slavery began in America over 400 years ago. Explain to me why you can't teach black children that your ancestors, maybe not your personal family ancestors, but your collective white ancestors committed the greatest crime in human history. Why you got a problem teaching that? Why do you have a problem teaching that your ancestors committed the greatest human atrocity ever recorded in history? Why can't you teach slavery? The reason they can't teach slavery is because white people have a superiority complex. The reason they can't teach the truth about slavery, the reason why this is such a big deal now, the reason why this is such a big deal now is because the white superiority complex and the white God complex, see, they need us to always view them as our saviors. They need our children to always view them as our, as, our, as our saviors. So if black people are taught and we have been indoctrinated for 400 years to view whites as our savior, if you turn around and teach black children that your white saviors are the very people responsible for putting you in the condition that you are in right now, that creates a significant intellectual conflict of interpretation. That creates a significant intellectual conflict of interpretation. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. That's a significant conflict of interpretation. So it's not that they can't teach them. They don't want our children to ask the question, that no white person wants to answer. And that is why are you the only people in human history to have dehumanized another people? Why are you the only people in human history to have ever dropped an atomic bomb on another people? Why are you the only people in human history that made it absolutely mandatory that slavery be perpetual intergenerationally from now until the end of time. They don't want to answer those questions because if they answer those questions, you start tapping, tapping, tapping at the reality of what racism really is. You start tapping at the reality of what white supremacy really is. That's why we need the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy, because we're going to teach white supremacy as a science. They will understand it. They will understand it. There's no trouble teaching slavery. The trouble is the more you teach black children the truth about slavery, the more you teach African children the truth about slavery, the more you reveal. The more you reveal the inherent evil of white consciousness. The more you teach black children about slavery, the more you reveal the inherent evil of white consciousness. That's right. They don't know how to teach slavery. This is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to do. If you live in a school district where white teachers are having trouble teaching black children about slavery, I'm going to offer you one or two things. 
If you live in a school district where white teachers have trouble teaching black children about slavery, I have an offer for you. Number one, I will come and teach our children about slavery for you. The prince will come. I will come to your school. Last time I checked, I was a certified school principal. Last time I checked. I will come to your school and I will teach your children about slavery. And if you don't want me teaching our black children about slavery, let me do the end service. Let me do the professional development and let me teach white teachers how to teach slavery to black. I will do it for free. You don't even have to pay me. Just get me there. I will do a free in service, any school in America, public school, charter school, parochial school, private school, independent school, any white school that got trouble teaching black children about slavery, bring in the most requested black scholar in the world and I will teach the children for you. You can go to lunch, go to Starbucks, take your ass to Starbucks and give them to me and I promise you that by the time I'm done, I only need one day, they will know everything about slavery. But the problem with that is they will also know everything about you. The problem with that is they will also know everything about you. That African Sun Tzu told us. That African Sun Tzu told us, if you know your enemy and don't know yourself, you have a 50% chance of dying in battle. If you know yourself and don't know your enemy, you have a 50% chance of losing that battle. If you don't know yourself and don't know your enemy, you will lose in every single battle. But if you know yourself and know your enemy, you cannot lose the war even in a thousand battles. This is an intellectual war. This is a spiritual war, it is an economic war, and it is a political war. If you come asking me whether I'm voting this election season, my answer is so far, hell no. And the reason my answer is so far, hell no, is because I haven't met a single candidate that is offering me anything that makes me interested to go and endorse them on election day. I'm not aware of a single black candidate. I'm not aware of a single white candidate. I'm talking not only president. I'm talking governors. I'm talking mayors. I'm talking city council. I'm talking committee people. I don't know of a single black person running for office in this country that I would vote for. Pennsylvania to California, Texas to Detroit. I don't know of one. You know why? Because I don't see none of them dealing with the five major problems of black America. And stop telling me about some damn universal Obama health care. Stop telling me about some damn universal Obama health care. That was not for blacks. That was for poor whites. And black people only benefit as a consequence. I'm going to say it again. Obamacare was not for blacks. It was for poor whites. And black people only benefit as a consequence of that. Don't play with me. What are the five major problems in black America? What are the five major problems in black America? And I say these in no order. Whatever order you want to choose don't matter to me. What are the five major problems in black America? I say these in no order. Whatever order you want to choose is perfectly okay with me. Number one, police genocide. What is your black candidate or your white candidate doing about police genocide? What is the plan to stop white police from killing unarmed black people? I'm going to stop and listen. What is your plan to get white police to stop killing defenseless black people? They just shot a, a pregnant woman. A pregnant woman was just murdered outside of Houston, Texas the other day. Rest in peace to her. Can somebody explain how a white po Why does a white police need to kill a pregnant black woman? But y'all didn't kill Dylan Roof and he was armed. When Dylan Roof walked into a church in South Carolina and murdered, what, nine? Nine of our family, including six women? Y'all took him armed and dangerous to Burger King. 
Y'all took Dylan Roof, armed and dangerous, to Burger King. How in the hell you take Dylan Roof, armed and dangerous, to Burger King, but you kill a pregnant black woman? Help me explain that. What is the black Democrats agenda for police genocide? What is the Congressional Black Caucus agenda for police genocide? What is the National Action Network's agenda for police genocide? What is the Urban League's agenda for police? What is the NAACP's agenda? What is the Masonic agenda for police genocide? Somebody help me. You want me to vote? Give me a reason. You want me to vote? Give me a reason. Number one, police genocide. Number two, miseducation. Number two, miseducation. 25% of black boys are graduating from high school in America. Only 25% of black boys are graduating from high school in America. Only 25% of black boys are graduating from high school in America. What are you going to do to put more black men in the classroom? What are you going to do to punish principals who allow black boys to be put in special ed for discipline reasons instead of learning problems? What are you going to do to punish principals that allow black boys to be put in special ed for discipline problems and not for learning problems? What are you going to do to principals and teachers who exclude black boys from learning by sending them out of the classroom all of the time and then you got a nerve to say he must got a learning disability because his test scores are low? The reason his test scores are low Mrs. Slurbanowski. The reason the test scores are low, Mrs. Pellegrino. The reason the test scores are low, Mrs. Silverstein. The reason the test scores are low is because you keep on putting them out the classroom. They be standing in the hallways all day, sitting in the detention room all day, sitting in the principal office all day. That's the problem. What are you going to do about it? What are you going to do to put the industrial building trades back in the high schools? What are you going to do to put the industrial building trades back in the high schools and stop making our kids go to college so they can be financially exploited by the banks of America? When are we going to put that plumbing program back? Graduate with your license. When are we going to put that carpentry program back? Graduate with your license. When are we going to put that HVAC program back in the high schools? Graduate with your license. When are we going to put that welding program back in the high schools? Graduate with your license. When are we going to put that auto mechanic program back in, the, back in the high school? Graduate with your license. Selma, Alabama, next Sunday, May the 26th, Dr. Umar's first visit to the ground, the holy ground of civil rights, Selma, Alabama, Sunday, May the 26th, 2 o'clock lecture and a 7 o'clock lecture, absolutely free, first come, first serve, it is going down, the revenge of Bloody Sunday, Atlanta, Georgia, Sunday, June 2nd, Atlanta, Georgia, Sunday, June 2nd. Atlanta, Georgia, Sunday, June 2nd at the Omanala Afrocentric Griot Museum, 337 Dargan Place in Atlanta. Philadelphia, 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 Pennsylvania, Sunday, June 30th, World Prayer Center, 29th and Ridge in Philadelphia, 4 o'clock. Atlanta, June 2nd, 4 o'clock. November 2nd, Tulsa, Oklahoma, November 2nd, Tulsa, Oklahoma, November 3rd, Oklahoma City, August 30th, Jacksonville, Florida, August 31st, Orlando, Florida, July the 6th, Charlotte, North Carolina, July the 6th, Charlotte, North Carolina, July the 6th, Charlotte, North Carolina, July the 14th, Hempstead, Long Island, New York, July the 14th, Hempstead, Long Island, Seattle, Washington, Judge Joe Brown and the Prince of Pan-Africanism, Seattle, Washington, Civil City Hall, Wednesday, May the 29th, 5 until 9. Donate to the school. Cash app, dollar sign FDMG school. Cash app, dollar sign FDMG school.
Mail-in donations, FDMG Academy, P.O. Box 9634. Mail-in donations, FDMG Academy, P.O. Box 9634, Wilmington, Delaware, 19809. Resumes, FDMG at gmail.com. Let me get back into my message. Police genocide, number one. Miseducation, number two. Let me stay on this miseducation for a minute. Let me stay on this miseducation for a minute. And I hope to see all of you in Wilmington, Delaware, June 8th and 9th. I hope to see all of you in Wilmington, Delaware, June 8th and 9th. I hope to see all of you in Delaware, June 8th and 9th, for the National Independent Black Parent Association Conference. California, y'all need to come on over to Wilmington. Texas, y'all need to come on over to Wilmington. Chicago, Milwaukee, Detroit, y'all need to get on down here. Cleveland, Cincinnati, Columbus, get on down here. Carolina, North, South, West Virginia, y'all need to get on up. D.C., Baltimore, y'all need to come on in, get this training so you can go back and fight to protect our children. You cannot be a warrior of the school-to-prison pipeline if you haven't been trained by the Prince of Pan-Africanism. Two days, nine to five. Two days, nine to five. Wilmington, Delaware. Let's make it pop. The cash app, why do I got to type the cash app? Dollar sign FDMG school. If you need the full link, it's cash.me slash dollar sign FDMG school. Cash.me slash dollar sign FDMG school. If you didn't get that, text my phone. I'll text it to you later. 215 215-989-9858. 215-989-9858. 215-989-9858. Problem number one, police genocide. Problem number two, miseducation. Let's stay with the miseducation for a minute. Let's stay with the miseducation for a minute. I just read an article today. I just read an article today. If you need my speaking schedule, text me. If you want to go to Africa with me this summer, text me. I'm looking for a black contractor to come and do all the work at the school for me. I'm looking for a black contractor to come to FDMG and do all the work for me at the school. I'm looking for some black contractors to donate their time. HVAC, electric, plumbing, sprinkler system, roof, carpentry. Donate the time so we can get the school up for our boys. Come on, black men. Come on, black men and women. Donate your time. I can pay for the materials. I can pay for the materials. Donate your time. Come to Wilmington. Fix this damn school up. There's no reason why this school shouldn't be up and running by the end of this summer. There's no reason why the Frederick Douglass and Marcus Garvey Academy is not up and running by the end of the summer. I'm doing all I can do. I am not a contractor. I am not a plumber. I am not an electrician. I am an educator. I am a psychologist. I am a political scientist. I do not have a building trade. You understand? So I got to depend on y'all. If I had a building trade, I'll fix the school myself. So I'm asking for some of you to care enough about our boys to get this damn school in order so we can get to the business of educating in black excellence. We want to make this invention list longer. We want to make this invention list longer. That's why I need y'all to donate. That's why I need y'all to donate. Darian Lamour, the school is a scam. Have a nice life, asshole. <clears throat> I read an article today. I read an article today. And the article said that black children were more likely to graduate if they had a black teacher. Listen to me. Listen, I read this today out of a white news magazine. Research, because y'all don't listen to me. Y'all need white people to come and confirm what Dr. Umar been telling you for 20 years. I've been told y'all this, but there's a new research out. I read it today. They said that the research has shown that black children do better in school, have higher self-esteem, and are more likely to graduate with a black teacher. Really? Are you surprised? Are you, why is that so, uh, 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 why is that so mind-blowing to know that black kids do better, have a higher self-esteem, and are more likely to graduate if they have a black teacher? I've been told y'all this. So, if we know that black children do better, are more likely to graduate, and have a higher self-esteem, that means 
School desegregation destroyed the self-esteem of black children. School desegregation is a main factor in the low graduation of black children. School desegregation is one of the biggest factors in the low expectancies that black kids have about themselves. In other words, a white teacher is toxic to a black child. That's what white folks have found. That's right. If a black teacher is better, then what is a white teacher? If the, if the self-esteem goes up with a, white, with a black teacher, what, does, what, what happens with a white teacher? If the black kid is more likely to graduate with a black teacher, what happens with the white teacher? If the black kid is less likely to be sent to special ed with a black teacher, then what happens with a white teacher? It's the reverse. It's the reverse. It's the reverse. So if you want me to vote for you, if you want me to vote for you, what is your plan to give black children more black teachers? What is your plan to give the black community community control of our schools? What is your plan? And black male teachers, black men are less than 1% of all teachers in the United States of America. Black men are less than 1% of all teachers in the United States of America. But they will be more than 50% of the teachers at the Frederick Douglass and Marcus Garvey Academy. They will be more than 50% of the teachers at the Frederick Douglass and Marcus Garvey Academy. Black men, send them resumes in. Black men, send them resumes in. Sisters, you can send yours in too. But black men, our boys need men. I'm looking for strong alpha males. Okay? Strong alpha males. Send those resumes in. FDMG resumes at gmail.com. FDMG resumes at gmail.com f d m g resumes at gmail.com is what we're looking for my, my thing is is is, is y'all need to what, what happened i'm in the process of relocating to wilmington delaware so the apartment is a mess right now y'all don't need to see all that I'm in the process of relocating to Wilmington, Delaware. I'm in the process of relocating to Wilmington, Delaware. I'm in the process of relocating to Wilmington, Delaware. So, brothers and sisters, number one, police genocide. Number two, miseducation. And let me say this about miseducation, which is also interesting. Let me say this about miseducation, which is uh, also interesting. Only 1% of all teachers in the white suburbs are black. Of all teachers in the white suburb are black. What does that mean? Only 1% of the teachers in the white community are black. Okay? Okay? So, if only 1% of the teachers in the suburbs are black, why are 60 70, 80% of the teachers in the black community white. Can somebody answer that for me? Can somebody answer that for me? Can somebody answer that for me? If only 1% of the teachers in the white suburb are black, why are 70, 80, 90% of the teachers in the black community are white. Y'all want to come over and clean my apartment? Okay. Y'all want to help me pack up for Delaware? Okay. I need four queens. I need four queens who are going to come to Philly, help Dr. Umar pack up the apartment and help me pack and unpack in Wilmington. Four queens. If you're interested in being a part of my packing team, only queens, four queens, shoot me a text. You can come help me pack up the apartment and unpack in Delaware. All right. So, number three, okay, number one, police genocide. Something wrong with my iPad Instagram. I don't know why I keep going in and out. 
But number one, police genocide. Number two, miseducation. Number three, mass incarceration. Mass incarceration. Newark, New Jersey. I don't know if y'all knew this. I just learned yesterday. I just learned yesterday. I just learned yesterday that Newark, New Jersey is building three new prisons. I wish I knew this during my lecture. I wish I knew this during my lecture. Okay? Newark, New Jersey is building three new prisons. They are taking money from the schools and they are building jails with the money from the school. Are you all aware that the New Jersey pension system for teachers? Are you all aware that the Pennsylvania pension system for teachers? Are you all aware that the Ohio pension system for teachers? Are you all aware that the Maryland pension system for teachers invests in private prisons? I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it again. Are you aware that in Maryland, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and there are others, the teacher retirement program takes your tax money and they invest it in private prisons to raise money for the teacher's retirement. I want to say it one more time. I want to say it one more time. I want to say it one more time. Are you aware that in Pennsylvania, Maryland, New Jersey, and Ohio, and they are not alone on more than half the states in this country, invest in private prisons in order to raise money for teacher retirement? Can I ask you a question? Can I ask you a question? Can I ask you a question? If the teachers are investing in private prisons in order to retire. If the teachers are investing in the prisons in order to retire, why would they care about educating your children? If they are investing in the prisons in order to retire, why would they care about educating your children? Isn't that a conflict of interest? What are you going to do about that, Mr. Mayor? What are you going to do about that, Mr. Councilman? What are you going to do about that, Mr. President? What are you going to do about that, Mrs. Governor? What are you going to do about that, Mr. State Rep, U.S. Rep, State Senator, U.S. Senator? We have a conflict of interest where the teachers are investing in private prisons for their retirement. And in order for them to make money, the kids cannot learn how to read. In order for them to make money, your son got to end up on Ritalin. In order for them to make money, your baby got to be diagnosed with ADHD. In order for them to make money, the children got to go to special education. Help me understand why the Congressional Black Caucus isn't saying nothing about that. Help me understand why the NAACP isn't saying nothing about that. Help me understand why the National Action Network and the Urban League ain't doing nothing about this secret that the teachers are investing in private prisons. How in the hell can the teachers be investing in prisons? Somebody talk to me today. Somebody talk to me. Okay. You said the teachers don't know. The teachers don't know? Well, they know now. The teachers don't know? So let me ask you something. Once they find out, how many teachers do you know are going to drop out of the retirement system, the teacher's retirement system? How many teachers you know are going to drop out the union, black or white? None of them are going to leave because they don't give a damn about what happens to black children as long as they get their bougie-ass retirement check. They don't know. They don't know. Well, what they going to do when they find out? Nothing. How do I feel about the new Black Panther Party? I love the new Black Panther Party. Those are my brothers. Shout out to Hashim and Zynga in Atlanta. Shout out to all the new Black Panther Party brothers. 
I'm cool with the Panthers. They all right with me. They done security for me. They looked out. I got a lot of good brothers in the Nation of Islam. Shout out to them. I got a couple of haters in there too, but that's all right. Most of the nation, they love me and I love them. We all right. I get love out the Hebrew camp. I get love in all the camps and I got love for all the camps. You understand? I respect where they stand at. My rosters, you know how we get down. Me and the rosters, the Bobo Shanti, you understand? That's two peas from the same pot. We come together. We just link up like Voltron. You know how me and the Bobo Shantis get down. That's Pan-African. That's Garveyism all day. You understand? I respect what they believe in and they respect what I believe in. Okay? Number three. Well, we one was police genocide. Two was miseducation. Three was mass incarceration. Number four, gentrification gentrification what are you going to do to stop the white folks from going into charlotte north carolina what are you going to do to stop the white folks from going into dallas texas what are you going to do to stop the white folks from going into oakland california los angeles and moving black people out in the name of real estate it's called ethnic cleansing what are you going to do to stop the white folks from coming into philadelphia washington dc baltimore maryland Shout out to Baltimore. Y'all got the whole strong Baltimore because now Baltimore is being gentrified by the white folks buying up the houses for a dollar. What are you going to do about gentrification? Detroit is being gentrified. Chicago is being gentrified. Milwaukee is being gentrified. Tulsa, Oklahoma is being gentrified. Oh, see, oh, yes, I keep up. I read about all black people. I'm a pan-Africanist. I am obligated by ideology. I'm a pan-Africanist. I am obligated by ideology to study the conditions of African people everywhere. I am obligated by ideology to study the conditions of African people everywhere. So I read newspapers from Oklahoma, black newspapers from California. I see what's going on. I was reading a black newspaper in Jacksonville, Florida, because part of being an orator, part of being a minister of Marcus Garveyism is you got to know what's going on with black people before you show up. I got to study Selma before I get to Selma next Sunday. I got to study Atlanta, Georgia before I get to Atlanta, Georgia on June 2nd. I got to study my hometown of Philadelphia before June 30th. I got to study Orlando, Florida before August the 31st. I got to study Charlotte. I got to study Charlotte, North Carolina before July 6th. I got to study Long Island, Hempstead, New York before July the 14th. I got to study the Bahamas before I get there. I got to study Bermuda before I get there. I got to study Brazil before I get there. I got to study Colombia before I get there. I got to study Brussels before I get there. I got to study Ghana before I get there. I got to study, uh, uh, where, where else am I going? Senegal before I get there. I got to study Swaziland before I get there because I am obligated as a pan-Africanist. I am obligated as a universal African nationalist. I am obligated as an African race nationalist. I am obligated to know what's happening with my people. Gentrification. The black politicians knew that white folks was going to start moving us out of our homes back in 1990. Real estate decisions are made at least 10 years in advance. They knew in 1990 that they were going to start moving black folks out in the year 2000 with the election of George Bush. And not a single black politician made us aware of this. Not a single black politician helped us prepare for the real estate takeover. Ethnic cleansing. This is called ethnic cleansing. They are moving you out and they use the charter schools to do it. They are moving you out and they use the charter schools to do it. They are moving you out and they use the charter schools to do it. Instagram, I got to start you over because your time ran out. I'm going to take some questions in a minute. I'm going to take some questions in a minute. Let me finish this. Let me finish this. How do they use 
And for all my scholars, well, conscious people who talk, stop stealing my material. I'm getting sick and tired of y'all plagiarizing my talking points. Don't give me no credit and then want to hate on me with my own information. Stop stealing my talking points. Go get your own. I'm getting sick and tired of people sending me YouTube clips of him, YouTube clips of her, YouTube clips of them, YouTube clips of him, YouTube clips of that one, and y'all stealing my material, regurgitating my information. Don't give me credit and then want to nerve. How you going to hate on the man who teaching you? I'm your favorite scholar's favorite scholar. I'm your favorite speaker's favorite speaker. I'm your favorite researcher's favorite researcher. I'm your favorite doctor's favorite doctor. The person you like watching watches me to learn what to say. The person you like watching the most studies the prints. That's facts. If you want the title, come get it. If you want the title, you got to take, you can't hate it away. You can't plagiarize it away. You can't copy it away. If you want this belt that I've been wearing for 10 years, undisputed, undefeated, heavyweight champion, and King Kong, come take it. Can't none of y'all tie my shoes. Can't none of y'all YouTubers tie my shoes. Not none of you. Y'all can't touch me. That's why y'all hate it when y'all see that microphone on that stage. Y'all hate it. Y'all try to turn the microphone off. Y'all try to turn the sound down. Because y'all know once he get on that microphone, God is going to come in that room. Whenever that man right there touches the microphone, just like Garvey before him and Douglas before him and Nat Turner before him, if he gets to that microphone, there's nothing we can do about it. They can debate whatever they want to debate, but they cannot debate the God-given prophetic voice of Ifa Tunde. Okay? Number five, police genocide, miseducation, mass incarceration, gentrification. Number five, access to wealth and resources. Access to wealth and resources. If black people are 12% of America, we want 12% of the money. If black people are 12% of the America, we want 12% of the banks. If black people are 12% of America, we want 12% of the oil, 12% of the land. We want our resources. We don't want no more rights. No more civil rights bills. We done with that. Because all y'all going to do is give it to the women, the gays, and the immigrants anyway. We don't want no more civil rights bills. I don't want to see another civil rights bill. We're done with that shit. No more Bills. I'm going to put that on the t-shirt. No more civil rights bills. Because all you're going to do is make it look like it's for black folks. Put a black president in office, Obama, and give it all to the gays. And the... No more civil rights bills. We don't want no rights. We don't want no laws. But we will take resources and loans. Keep your rights. Give me the resources. Keep your laws. Give me some bank loans. And I'm not talking about no $5,000 small business loan. We don't want that crap. We're going to give out $10,000, $7,000 small business loan. What the hell we going to do with a $7,000 small business loan? And, 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 and the sickness about this little small business loan that y'all giving black folks. The sickness is the bank that gave us the $7,000 loan got $7 million worth of black people's money stored up in it. Ain't that something? The same bank giving out a $7,000 loan got $7 million worth of black people's money stored up in their coffers and they want to be stingy with our money. How the hell you going to have a problem loaning black people their own money? That's why we got to build black banks. That's why we got to build black banks, black Credit unions, black savings and loan. Frederick Douglass said black independence. Marcus Garvey said black independence. Jean Jacques Dessaline, black independence. Patrice Lumumba, Kwame Nkrumah, Amical Cabral, Steve Biko, Robertson Bukwe. Black independence is what we fighting for, brothers and sisters. Black independence. So if you want me to vote, I'll vote for you. But you better have an answer for the file. 
five plans. If they ain't got five plans, when y'all go to the town hall meeting, y'all better ask them. Do you have a plan to eliminate police genocide? Do you have a plan to eliminate miseducation? Do you have a plan to change the mass incarceration laws? Do you have a plan to stop ethnic cleansing? And do you have a plan to redistribute the wealth of America so black people get their share? Because after all, we built this damn place. Arabs ain't build America, black people built America. Chinese ain't build America, black people built America. Jews ain't build America, black people built America. Mexicans ain't build America, black people built America. Anglo-Saxons ain't build America, I built America. So don't talk to me about no damn minority set-asides, because I'm not no damn minority. That's for your immigrants. I was not an immigrant. My ancestors were imported. My ancestors were imported. My ancestors were not immigrants. My ancestors were imports. Remember, you didn't even consider them people. Remember, I am not an immigrant. I am an import. And as an import, there is no other group you can lump me in with. And black people, this is why we got to be unapologetically African. See, Selma, Alabama, I can't wait to see you next Sunday. Seattle, Washington, I can't wait to see you next Wednesday. Atlanta, Georgia, I can't wait to see you June the 2nd. Wilmington, Delaware, NIBPA, I can't wait to train y'all June 8th and 9th, two days, Saturday and Sunday. I can't wait. Philadelphia, Sunday, June 30th, Garden of Prayer, 29th and Ridge, we got some talking to do. And for all my black men, don't forget, black men, it's time for the black men's convention. It's time to unite the black men. I'm not playing. I'm tired of this police killing our women. I'm tired of this. It's time for us to stand up. It's time for us to stand up. I don't want to go into all that because that ain't for us no social network. But I'm calling on all black men. Find places in your city that can seat 500 black men. Go to the church and tell the church, listen, we having a black men's town hall meeting at your church for free. We ain't charging and you ain't charging. I'm going to say it again, black man. Go to the churches in your city and say Dr. Umar is coming to moderate a town hall so we can come up with a plan of action, a black agenda for this city. And it's going to be at your church, whether you like it or not. We not charging. Dr. Umar not charging and you ain't charging. Do you understand Past the pork chop. Do you understand Deacon Watermelon? Do you understand Reverend Chicken Wing? We not paying you and the people ain't paying us. This ain't about money. This is about liberation. All my brothers out there, every city, brother, every city. But we're going to start off regional. We need regionals. I want to do eight. I want to do eight. So we need, obviously, got to be one in L.A. Obviously, it got to be one in New York. Obviously, it got to be one in Houston because they're so large. Chicago is the fourth. Those are four required. L.A., New York, Chicago, and Houston because those are our four biggest cities. Philadelphia is fifth, okay? But it doesn't necessarily have to be in Philly. It could be D.C. It could be Maryland. Do you understand? It could be Virginia. And then we need one in the southeast. We need one, so probably Atlanta, Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina, we need one. Then we need one in the deep south, Louisiana, Mississippi, uh, Arkansas, right around there, Tennessee maybe. Okay, then we need another one more towards that because I don't want to leave nobody. I want to make sure we look at the map. We look at the map of America and we strategically put eight because I want all black men who care to be able to get there. All black men who care, we need them to be able to get there. I love you too, Chicago. September 2nd, Chicago, Illinois, at the Chicago African Arts Festival. My new book will be released, Black Parent Advocate in Chicago, Chi-Town. I love you. Y'all took me into the world. Y'all introduced me to the world. New York City, I love y'all. Y'all also helped introduce me to the world. Chicago, New York, you know how we get down. I want to go to the phones. If you have a question for Dr. Umar, you can do it two ways. Go to Instagram and tap in. Or call me at 215-989-9858. Go to Instagram and tap in. Or go to, or call me right now. 215-989-9858. Phone lines is open. Phone lines is open. Donations. 
Marlene, $50. Sonia, $10. Gary, $10. Thank you for the donations, y'all. Peace and love. You live with Dr. Umar Johnson. With whom am I speaking? Hey, Doc. You're speaking with Christopher, man. Brother Chris, what's going on, Brother Chris? What's popping in Houston? Hey, I'm blessed to be alive, brother. Just working hard. I met you at the uh, uh, the shrine when you came down here. I took a picture of you signed my sweater, shine my hat. And, man, we had a good time. Blessings, brother. I look so forward to coming back down to Houston, too, back to the shrine. It's been a minute. Uh, that was uh, that was that was Kwanzaa. That was Kwanzaa of seventeen, I believe. Yes. Yes, sir. So it's been almost two years. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I got to get back down to Kwanzaa. Yes, sir. I, I mean, I got to get back down to Houston. Go right ahead, brother. Last, last night I was talking to a black queen, and I was telling her that she's gonna get her black uh, pretty much slaves. I said, we don't own nothing. I said, all these grocery stores stop selling clothes, shoes. We are starving, baby, because we don't own nothing. She cursed me out. Absolutely. But my thing is, but my thing is, how we like these baby boomers on page like That's right. And I, and I think the baby boomers, they don't even like know, like they that they lost, like, you know, I actually feel sorry for them, like, because they really think somebody's coming to save them. True. It's true, and brother. I talk to my aunts, because all my aunts uh, are between 62 and 69. Yes, sir. So when I'm talking like this, I'm like the devil to them. Like, I'm like, I'm like somebody who, who being managed or being disrespectful, but I'm tired of seeing my people paying rent and I'm tired of going to the corner store and seeing people behind a counter that don't even look like me. Absolutely, brother. Man, that, that put tears in my eyes. Like, I'm, I don't even shop. I don't do nothing no more. I mean, if I do, it's going to be black. That's right. I mean, and like you said earlier, the black dollar is the black power. The black dollar is the black power. That's right, brother. And I just think, Whatever you do, don't stop, Doc. We need you more than ever. Appreciate you, brother. Whenever you're going to get that, all men, men, please let me know I'm coming. I'm bringing all my little nephews. It's going to be about 20 of us. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I'm coming. I'm going to pack the house, man. We're on I'm it. I'm 32 years old. I need you more than ever. All my brothers, we're not a fan, man. So we, and we need it, man. I was saying, I'm about 90 million of us. Yes, sir. In the U.S. Yes, sir. Imagine if we get 30 million black men to give $100 every week. That, that'll change everything. Change the whole reality, brother. Change, change the whole reality. Everything. But we, we got to change that mindset, though. The problem is we ain't changed the mindset. We got to change the mindset. Bro. It hurts, man. I'm trying to get, like, all the young men, like, it's time, man. It's, it's time, time, brother. It's time. It's time. We gonna make it happen, bro. Let me do this. I'm gonna run and take another call. Do you have my cell number? Yes. Okay. Yes. Shoot me yes. a text so I can lock you in. Thanks a lot, black man. I appreciate you. All right. All right now. Peace and love. You live with Dr. Umar Johnson. With whom am I speaking? Uh, my name is Charlie out of Los Angeles. Sister Charlie out of Los Angeles. How you doing today, my sister? I'm fine, thank you, brother. How are you? All is well. What's on your mind? Oh, uh, okay. Am I speaking to Dr. Omar? This is him in the flesh, queen, the one and only. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I thought you were a filter. Okay. Listen, brother, my comment slash question is this. Um... I was a little concerned. I spoke with a couple of brothers that I know because everybody is very emotional uh, right now at this point. The uh, sister being killed like that by the police in Dallas is simply just, to me, the straw that broke the camel, camel's back. That's been going on constantly all day, every day, even before we got the cameras and social media to be able to expose it. So I'm um, thinking like this, though. See, if brothers, not only black men, but any men 
that are supporting of this travesty get together. Don't be baited by this uh, white man's world into trying to put together weapons to fight him, to go get guns and stuff. He all he can always get much bigger guns, and he has much bigger weapons. Our weapons have to be some type of unity, and it happens to be the men first. I don't think you can pay any attention to the women. I think the women, the sisters and stuff, as your previous caller mentioned, and how uh, mean this uh, sister or queen was to him, I think we'll fall much more in line once we see the men step up. So if the churches and all the people that you spoke of if the men would unite in that way, or the way you strategically uh, just laid it out um, just a few minutes ago, that we could also boycott everything. You know, don't nobody go to work, don't nobody go to school, don't nobody go to buy nothing or whatever, some kind of way to unite and make this happen. Um, so what do you think about that? That's just my suggestion. Uh, I, 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 I agree with you, Queen Mother, that the last stage of struggle is, is, is military. That's the last stage. Um, I would say that you are, you are correct. That's not the first thing that we should be thinking about. Okay, but we must think about it because it will be the last stage. When all other systems of white supremacy to control black people have broken down, once the propaganda system have broken down, once the educational system has broken down once the political system has broken down once the white man's ability to strain you economically has broken down when when he has exhausted every means at controlling the black revolution he will resort to his military so we must be realistic we must be realistic it will have to be dealt with sooner or later but it is the final analysis it is not the first analysis it is the final analysis Okay, so yes, you're correct. It should be delayed, but it cannot be denied. But I do agree with you, Queen. I do agree with you. Oh, yes, I will. The best, uh, two years brothers or whatever, but you have to kick it off. You have to jump start it. Yes, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Well, first of all, we have to, we have to get our minds right. We, we have to, we have to get the minds right. The problem is the minds are not right at this present time. That, that, that's the issue that we're dealing with at present. The minds. Right. Once we get those minds right, then uh, everything will be all right. Okay, yes, sir. Thank you so much. No problem. Thank you for that call, Queen. You're welcome. All right. Phone line is open if you got a question. Phone line is open if you got a question. <laughs> Dr. Umar Johnson is live. Who am I speaking with? Peace and love. Dr. Umar Johnson is live. Who am I, who am I speaking with? Speaking of Brother Street Council, brother from Newark, New Jersey, brother. Newark, New Jersey. Yes, sir. What's good, black yes, man? Sir. Yes, sir. First of all, brother, we ready, brother. We ready. The time is now, brother. The time is right now. Not tomorrow, not next week, not us sitting down on our ass waiting for the next one to get murdered and slaughtered on these streets, brother. Yes, sir. The time is now. We ready, brother. The uh, bottom line is, brother, the way they slaughtered that sister, brother, and it, it's a pattern, brother. It ain't just that sister, man. It's across America, man, whether it's on video or non-video, brother, whether it's in the courtroom or non-courtroom. They continue to slaughter us, brother. They continue to defeat the, the, the these, these garbage, these, these, these false education. Brother, like you said, brother, and I put it on Facebook ASAP, brother. We need a black man convention, brother. I will get with these Negroes, these court shot eating, uh, uh, boot licking, shoe shuffling, uh, uh, coons, brother, and tell them, man, open up these damn doors. If you can't open it up with a homeless, open up these damn doors, brother, because we need to put together an agenda and we need to do that ASAP, brother. Yes, sir. Brother. I agree with you, brother. You, I agree with you. I appreciate you holding the line, man, and continue to, you know, uh, 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 not compromise your position, man, for our people, man. The reason why we ain't got multiple Marcus Garvey's and multiple Malcolm X because everybody controlled by paycheck, brother. The yes, sir. Now, brother, 
that weather, when it hits the fan, brother, none of that stuff gonna matter, man. All we got is the power within our people, brother. Absolutely. We need, to, we need to find out when you take the call from the black man, you got you need to find out, ask them, brother, is you ready? And is you ready right now? Other than that, man, they can't get they can't be falling in love with nothing of this world, brother, because all this stuff is temporary and we can't take it with us. Absolutely. Us, Absolutely. Appreciate that, brother. Appreciate that. Will do, brother. Will do. Peace and love. Appreciate that. Yeah, y'all saw the bookshelf shift. Well, I'm packing up my books. So the bookshelf The bookshelf don't have as many books in it as it did. So it's going to lean because all the books and now I'm taking books out, so you know, could have been an ancestral shift. You know, that could have been an ancestor, you know, clapping at the energy on the live today. But, again, I'm packing up the whole apartment. Wilmington, I'm on my way, baby. Wilmington, I'm on my way. We packing it up. We packing it up. I've been here 10 long years, and I got, I got a lot to pack, too. I got to pack up all my trophies, my statues, my books. Woo! I need them queens. I need them queens going to come help me pack up and unpack. We need that. Peace and love, Queen. You live with Dr. Uma. Who am I speaking with? This is Crystal from Brooklyn, New York. Peace and love, Sister Crystal. What's on your mind today, gorgeous? I really want to know how you feel about this abortion law that had just passed. It's mind-boggling to me. I want to know your views on that. Okay. I haven't studied the details of the new abortion law. From what I understand, that law was only passed in one state at present. I don't believe the Supreme Court had shifted in their position on the abortion. I just believe that it was certain states that had passed a more stringent discipline law that punishes women as well as doctors and hospitals that administer abortions after which trimester did they say it was illegal? How how late do they allow the abortions, Queen, from what you saw on the law on the law? Did they outlaw abortion due to rape? Did they flat out outlaw that? Okay, and 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 and, and, and uh, that's Alabama. So I'm I'm going to read that law well because I'll be in Selma, Alabama next Sunday. So I want to know exactly what that law states. So I'm going to read up on that. But I did hear that 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 Ala, that Alabama and I think Georgia as well. Uh, they are not allowing you. Well, let me tell you why they're doing this. Let me give you the backdrop. Okay. 25 of the 50 United States have a zero population growth rate for white people right now. I want to repeat that. 25 of the 50 United States have a zero population growth rate for white people right now. That means... There are more Europeans transitioning in those 25 states than are being born. That's one of the reasons why we see so much of this aggression against African people. That's one of the reasons why we see so much of this aggression against African people because they recognize the threat. So they have to artificially, right? They have to artificially engineer a zero population growth for black people. That's why you have police genocide, black-on-black -black crime, drugs, mass incarceration, poor schools, poverty, all of that is designed, birth control, all of that is designed to bring us to a zero population growth. But they have to do it artificially. But with the European, they have 25 states where they have a zero population growth naturally. Through nature, they are having a zero population growth. Don't get me wrong. I don't wish that on nobody at all, but it is the reality. And because you have 25 states with a zero white population growth rate, they are changing the laws to make sure white women keep their babies because they're losing their numbers. That's what this abortion law is about. I can promise you they will not stop black women from having abortions. I can promise you there will be special programs. I can because remember, the way America works is they pass a law. America will pass a law and then they will create a little program 
that is an exception to the law. They do this all the time. This is why I don't know why black people celebrate these laws, because they will pass a law and then they will create a little exception in the law that allows for certain groups to ignore that law. I can promise you they will not stop black women from getting abortions. This is for white women because they have to beef up their numbers because their numbers are shrinking. I just want to say something about Jamaica. The Jamaica, Jamaica, shout out to Jamaica. I love Jamaica. You know, Jamaica is one of Dr. Umar's strongest uh, countries, even though it's an island. It's one of my strongest countries of support. Like, Jamaica yes, is a very love, big Dr. Umar island. Yep, we love her to see the island. I just want to know that. Appreciate you, Queen. You stay, you stay blessed up there. All right, you take care. Got you. Peace and love. Yes, brothers and sisters, that's about making sure they cut down on white abortions. That's what that it's not about black women. That's about white women. That abortion laws is about white women. It's not about black women. When am I coming to Pennsylvania? DJ Dub Kev. I will be in uh, Philadelphia. Sunday, June 30th, DJ Dub Kev. Sunday, June 30th, 4 o'clock, Garden of Prayer, 29th and Ridge. Make sure you come on out. Peace and love. Who's calling in from San Antonio, Texas right now? I can't hear you. Who, who's calling in from San Antonio, Texas? Hello? Yes, ma'am. I can hear you now, Queen. W w are I'm you... calling from Virginia. Okay, say that again. I didn't hear you. I didn't hear you. You calling from where? Calling from Virginia. Virginia. Where at in Virginia? What city? Something. Okay, go right ahead, Queen. What's on your mind? What is my take on homeschooling? I support homeschooling. I think it is a good temporary strategy that parents can put in place to educate their children until we have full schools where we can educate all of our kids as a group, collectively, as a movement. The reason why I call homeschools a band-aid is because black children have to be taught how to systematically work together. We have to forge a collective consciousness that cannot be done in individual homes. That must be done in mass with educational institutions. But I think it's a very good temporary strategy. Create your curriculum. There's a lot of curriculums online for anybody who wants to homeschool their child, especially if you're homeschooling pre-K to third. There's so many resources that are available to you. Make sure you download your state standards for education. Not that you're going to go by those because you're going to surpass those, but I want you to at least understand what your state is expecting your child to know in case you decide to put them back into public school at some point. You do need to have a roadmap that lets you know how your curriculum compares to the state guide for um, grade level standards. So you want that. You also want to create a room in your house that will serve as the homeschooling room. You don't want your homeschool to be unprofessional. Make sure it's very professional, very disciplined. Make sure everybody respects it. Because what I've seen in homes where the kids are homeschooled, sometimes it's not taken seriously enough. So the kids end up not learning. Like there's no defined time. Like you want to create a culture. So your child knows from 8 o'clock to 1 o'clock is school. It's no TV. There's no telephone. There's no visitors. There's no music. It's school. And I would even I would even recommend that your child actually puts on a homeschool uniform, whatever that might be. And they know that when they put that shirt on, when they put those pants on, you know, when they put those glasses on, whatever they but they need to physically put on something so they understand it is time to learn. And when the homeschooling is over for the day, you make them take that shirt off, you know, make them take that outfit all but your child needs to psychologically be able to separate and switch between the home environment as well as the homeschool environment so i recommend you choose a room it should be one room one space and that's where we do the learning if it has to be the living room so be it but i would create psychologically an atmosphere in the living room that the child knows that it's time for learning like you might put up a certain board you might put a hang up something but psychologically you need symbols and signs to help the child separate and differentiate between what is home life and what is school life. That's going to be a big challenge for you. Also, you got to create an academic calendar for your homeschool. So what I mean by that is, uh, is your homeschool going to be year round? 
Is it going to be a nine month educational calendar like public school, September to May or August to, excuse me, August to June or September to May? So you want to come up with that. You also need to find you a coach, an academic coach, which could be a teacher. There's a lot of retired teachers in our community and you can get them to coach you, especially in those subjects where your child might struggle or where you might struggle. You know, coach, they can coach you through those subjects, but it's not hard. You know, I do homeschool consultations as well. There's also brothers and sisters out there who have different homeschool curriculums, but you can really create your own, especially K to three. K to three, you can really create your own. Now, when you get the fourth through seventh, you might need to call on a coach. Fourth through seventh, you might want to purchase a curriculum or have somebody consult with you with your curriculum. Ninth through twelfth, you're definitely going to need extra help. I'm not a big fan of high school homeschools. I am not a big fan of high school homeschools because parents tend not to be proficient in everything that a child needs to learn, you know, on the high school level. But it can still be done. It can still be done. Uh, and I, I, but you got to be disciplined. My big, the biggest challenge of homeschooling is to be disciplined. Too many black parents are not disciplined. You have to have the discipline to not answer your phone, to not run errands, to not have visitors over. You got to have the discipline to focus in on your child. Like you really got to be disciplined. And a lot of black parents who want to be homeschoolers are not disciplined enough to homeschool their children. But I welcome you to do it. It can be a great experience for your child. I really, I had, tr this is what I want you to do, Quinn. I want you to take my number and then maybe you can text me that because I had trouble picking you up. So take my number. Do you, do you, are you able to take down myself? Sure. You ready? Okay. Yeah, I'm ready. 215. 989-98. Five eight two one five nine eight nine nine eight five eight. Okay, so text you. Yes, ma'am. Text me that, and I will respond to you. Okay, love. Thanks for calling in. Be blessed. All right. Let me uh. Donations. Let me see who been donating. Fresno, hold on one second, Fresno. I'm checking something. Yep, yep. Uh, I'm checking something real quick. Uh, yep, yep, I'm here, I'm here. I got you, hold on. Make sure y'all keep on donating. Make sure y'all keep on donating. Cash.me slash dollar sign FDMG school. Cash.me slash dollar sign fdmg school okay also you can donate by mailing in a check of money order payable to fdmg academy p.o box 96 34 wilmington delaware 19809 fresno go right ahead you call it from fresno good brother yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Now, talk to I me know, what do you think of restitution right you know how you know all of our ancestors 
I'm listening. Yeah, all of our ancestors came from slavery, right? We came from Okay. We got destroyed by them. From then until present, we still getting slaughtered by them, right? We know that these people have been a persistent enemy, consistent on us, our minds, you know what I mean? Our education, keeping us their education. So, seeing how they've been a consistent enemy, they still don't want to keep the institution, right? I feel like if, if you were descendant of, of slavery, you're going to have a white man last name, right? Possibly. Go ahead. So, 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 if if he, if you had European last name, that that European uh, last name, then you know that there's a white man with that same last name living nice and wealthy, right? Uh huh. So maybe. So it should come from all those people. Restitution just put it in, put it in. You know, brothers is happy to be African. Africa can help out with the restitution. Go ahead, put it in, put it in. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm with you. I'm with you. For it. If not, like, I look at brothers like Farrakhan, right? Mm hmm. Uh, so, you know, he was a big Facebook thing. He has a orm, you know, a little small following, an army or whatever, right? All this time, so I'm a millennial, right? So I'm like a newer generation, right? Born right. In the, eight, in the late 80s, right? So the way I look at it is the same shit that's been going on before I was born is still going on now, and they got all these brothers fighting with each other. Uh -huh. time, I see Farrakhan just talking constantly, talking constantly. Like, there's actually you just gonna keep talking and talking and talking and smiling and talking and talking and talking, or is, or is like, is, is something gonna happen where the shit's gonna change? The dynamics is gonna change. We gonna because it's already been proven that not that uh that protests don't work. Hold up a sign, it don't work. Nonviolent protests, it don't work. Somebody get killed tomorrow, hold up, it don't work. Has it ever worked? Well, I think that, number one, and I can't speak for the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, that would take someone from the Nation of Islam, which I don't belong to. Uh, but I would say, though, that leaders cannot be blamed for the failures of black America separate from the people. In other words, the reason Dr. King was so successful, the reason the most honorable Marcus Garvey was so successful is because not only were they great leaders, but they had people who were willing to do the work, you see. So whenever you evaluate black leadership, you cannot evaluate them in a vacuum. They must be evaluated within the context of the psychological readiness of the people that they're leading. In other words, right. if you look at us today right now, I think we are at our weakest state psychologically that we've ever been in America. I believe the psychology. Wait, 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 wait. Let me finish. I ain't done, brother. The psychology of the enslaved African right. was more ready, more prepared, and stronger than the psychology of the 21st century African. Right now, we are very meek. We're very, we are a very weak people mentally today because we have been so dumbed down, social networked, interneted, spoiled. Okay, I look at how spoiled black men are. I look at how uh, materialistic black women are. You know, God forbid if a war started today. I don't know how we would respond to that because we're not the men and women we were 50 years ago, 100 years ago, and damn near not 200 years ago. Go right ahead. This is true. I do. I train a lot, right? You know, if you do anything online, how to shoot weapons, martial arts, right? You see, you see the Europeans constantly doing this shit, training themselves, right? Compared to we are because we too busy drinking, too busy smoking. Hanging out, chasing women, chasing whores. You know what I'm saying? Instead of don't call the queens whores, brothers. Don't call the queens whores, brother. They all queens. I didn't call the queens whore. I didn't call the queen whore. I said chasing whores. The only the only the only woman that's a whore to me is a. Okay, I got you. I got you, bro. <laughs> also, I just want to say that it's important for black folks to get into coding, programming, telecommunications, right? Yes, sir. Your communication, right? You on Facebook? Anything you say on Facebook, we know is track. So the white man is probably watching right now. You know, they like watching. They like staring. You know. No doubt, brother. Thank you for that comment. I want to switch to another caller. Appreciate you, black yeah. man. Peace and love, Colleen, Texas. You've been calling for a while. Who am I speaking with? <laughs> You're speaking with Morris out of Colleen, Texas. How 
How you doing, brother? Peace and love, brother. All is well. What's going on down in Colleen, Texas? I've been there once about three, four years ago. Yeah, it's, 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 we got that Texas thing going on, man, with that thing down there, um, like 45 Houston, man, and it's, it's really weighing on me, and, and I don't Yeah, that hurt my man. heart. That right there hurt my heart. I'm going to say this, I man. I'm going to say this, okay. and I'm going to let you finish. You know, I'm not a violent brother at all, you understand. But I recognize that violence is a way of life for our oppressor. And if you look at our history, the solution to police genocide is obvious. But I don't think black men are willing to accept what that solution is. We know that black leadership and most black mainstream organizations don't want to accept that solution. And it's real simple. The only thing that has ever stopped white genocide against black people was a retaliation that was physical that challenged the oppressor's right that he felt he had to take away black life. So saying that real simply, black men are going to have to line up shoulder to shoulder with weapons, with weapons. And we're going to have to march. We're going to have to march to the police district. It's, 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 really, it's, it's really hard for us because we're, kind of, we're coming out of an institution where we don't even know our brother. We don't even like our brother. You know, we're yeah. fresh off that and fresh off the knowledge that we, it's, it's new to us to say, hey, that's my brother. Right. That's my guy over there. That's my, that's my brother over there. And the new generation, you know, I mean, I'm not homophobic or anything like that. That's not my thing, you know. But it's it, it's really weighing on me that how the it's new to us, and 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 when we jump into this new generation of people, is like, hey brother, that's 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 not the way to go. You're my brother, and you see that what he has in his heart and how he grew up, and it's new to him to coming out of this home, coming out of white people or white supremacy, telling him he ain't nothing and he doesn't know his roots and everything like that, it's hard for us to see and to say and to change that change that subconscious in your mind to say that. You see what I'm saying, Dr. Umajo? I respect you to the highest Yeah, I agree with you, bro. Most level. Thank you. And it's just for a young generation to see this. I mean, people waking up around the world. I mean, everybody has their own philosophy on waking up is. Everybody has their own theory, their own hypothesis on what waking up is. But we're really waking up. But the thing is, to see another black guy walking down the street with a hoodie, Dr. Umar Johnson, I seen this guy drive, ride his bike. I, in my mind, automatically, I thought, he, he must be up to no good. Wow. And that's sad for me to subconsciously say that. Right. This guy must be up to no good. He's riding, he's walking up the street with a hoodie on. It's 80 degrees. What is he up to? Because that's that white supremacy subconscious that I had within me. But how can I change that? That's what we need to inject into the black society now. Okay, why do you think that? We don't have the time to stop and think, why do we think like that? Right, we because we're operating on conditioned, refle re conditioned reflexes and conditioned responses. See, the whole black unconscious, our unconscious, our subconscious, has been totally programmed by white supremacy. Totally. That's why when we become woke... When somebody says I'm woke or I'm conscious, they're only conscious of what they're conscious of. They're not yeah. conscious of what they're unconscious of. That's why you can be conscious, you can be well-read, you can be African-centered, and you can still disrespect another black man. Why? Because your consciousness is skin deep. Your consciousness is only about the information that you have learned. It has nothing to do with your conditioned reflexes and your conditioned responses. 90% of all human emotion, thought, and behavior. 90% of all human emotion, thought, and behavior is a result of indoctrination. It is the unconscious programming that dictates how we act. So it doesn't matter how woke we become until we make the unconscious conscious so that we can reprogram it. Until you reprogram the collective unconscious of African people, you will never see a revolution in African reality because the woke part is only 10%. 
Ten percent of us are woke. I don't mean ten percent of us as people. I mean ten percent of your consciousness is woke. The other ninety percent is still Europeanized, and that's where we're messing up. This is why we think we can read a couple books about Black history and think we're not slaves no more. Do you realize that Sheikh Anta Jope, probably the greatest African scholar of of modern history, he was the greatest African anthropologist, historian, Egyptologist. He was married to a white woman, Ivan Van Sertema, who is second only to uh, Sheikh and to Jope and probably second to Dr. Ben. Ivan Van Sertema had a white wife as well. These are two of the greatest African minds, two of the greatest African researchers, two of the greatest African historians, and they still had white women. You know why? Because the woke part was only 10%. That was all prefrontal cortex. That unconscious, that memory was totally Europeanized, which is why, I, that's why at the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy, brother, we ain't just piling on information. We got to get at the information that's already there, bring the trash can, the proverbial trash can, and dump out all that European programming. That's why I love when Frederick Douglass said, when Frederick Douglass said, it is better to raise strong children than to repair broken men. It is better to raise strong children than to repair broken men because we don't understand that we are being we are being dictated to by our unconscious not our conscious go ahead be quick bro because i got a lot of folks calling in go right ahead i know i know go ahead but for you to take so long to raise your money for your school and we have all these people in the nba in the nfl that's millionaires Yes. It saddens me. It saddens me for you to go through this extent. I think it took you like two years, two and a half. Four and a half. Four and a half. Four and a half years to raise that much money for the school, and 80 and 90 percent of the NFL and NBA is black people. And I told, and I just went crazy talking to people like, how could this be? And you only raised this one for one school. Yes. We need this in, we, there is enough people out there in the NBA and NFL for us to have our own state. Yes. Our own state, Dr. Lamar Johnson. Absolutely. So you to go through this to raise your school, it's just, it's, it, it, it's mind-blowing. It just shows me how much we don't look out for each other, how much it's just so far and so on. We 300 years behind. I watch colors. We 300 years behind, and they just sitting up here eating tea and scrumpets and just living their life. While we're catching up. That's all I wanted to do. Is talk to you right quick, Appreciate you, brother. Thank you for nah, thank you, brother. Your time. Make sure you stay in touch right. with me, brother. Oh, yeah, no problem, Dr. All right, now. Sometimes you have to stop and process it all. You have to stop and process it all because. The solution is so obvious, but black people don't want the responsibility or the risk involved. I want to make sure y'all understand this. Black people don't want the responsibility of liberation, and we don't want to take the risk in order to obtain it. Let me say this again. Black people don't want the responsibility of liberation. Hold on one second, please. Hold on one second. Black people don't want the responsibility of liberation, and we don't want to take the risk. I want to make sure we understand the R&R. &R. I want to make sure we understand the R&R. &R. Black people don't want the responsibility, especially the financial. Especially the financial. Black people don't want the responsibility of liberation, and we damn sure don't want the risk of liberation. Peace and love, black man. Where you calling from? Uh, I'm from Thompson, Georgia. Thompson, Georgia. Thompson, Georgia. How far from Atlanta? Uh, two hours. Two hours. I'm going to be in Atlanta June 2nd at the Amendola Griot Museum, brother. Try to come on through. Unless you're closer to Alabama. Are you closer to Selma or are you closer to Atlanta? Closer to South Carolina. Closer to Atlanta. Okay, no problem. Go right ahead, my brother. Yeah, I want to tell you, I've been listening to you since like 2015, and I've been in 10th grade now. And I want to ask you what you think about uh, 
Like, Wait, speak up, brother. You, you, you're you a little muffled. You're a little muffled. Make sure you're not I leaning said, on... I said, there you go. I said I wanted, I wanted to uh, ask you how you felt about Dr. Khalid Muhammad. Oh, Dr. Khalid Abdul Muhammad is one of my heroes, brother. I never had the chance to meet him in the flesh. Never had the chance to meet the late Dr. Khalid in the flesh, but uh, he's one of my heroes, brother. You know, he continued in that work of uh, El Hajj, Malik El Shabazz, Malcolm X, whose Earth Day we honor this Sunday, and of course, the most honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey, greatest black leader of the 21st century. So he came in that, in that vein, brother, and I really appreciated Khalid, you know, because, uh, you know, it's difficult to be a dark-skinned leader for black people because we have been so white supremacy washed and so light-skinned supremacy washed into indoctrinated that Brother Khalid, I don't know if you realize this, you know, but he was the darkest leader we've had since Marcus Garvey. Garvey was the darkest, and you know, and then Khalid was the second. But we normally don't gravitate to black men who are richly melanated. You know, most of our leaders, most of our leaders have been able to pass a brown paper bag test. And I don't think that's a coincidence. I think it's because black people are still very much on a subconscious level again. Black people are still very much on a subconscious level, very much indoctrinated with a hatred towards darker hue you know we claim to be proud to be black and all of that but at the end of the day we prefer butter almond we prefer uh, butter pecan we prefer caramel we don't really want that chocolate and that's 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 yeah. something that we see politically you know you look at barack obama and clarence thomas just to give you an example barack obama biracial light skin european hair right uh, well, actually, yeah. Obama had nappy hair. He permed it. I don't know if a lot of people know this. If you look at a lot of Obama's videos before he became a senator of Illinois, Barack Obama hair was as nappy as mine. Obama was nappy. Yeah. You could go on YouTube and look up his videos. Barack Obama had nappy hair. It was peasy. It was nappy like any other African. All of a sudden, he becomes junior senior, uh, junior senator of Illinois, and his hair is thin. Barack Obama was perming. But the point I'm trying to make, is if you compare Barack Obama to Clarence Thomas, both of them were sellouts. Both of them were sellouts. The difference is Clarence Thomas was dark-skinned with a nappy hair. Barack Obama was light-skinned with fine hair. And sometimes that, that's, all, that's all that you need to be is a lighter hue, and black people will accept you over and over again, no matter how many times they betray you. Go right ahead. Yeah, I was going to ask you, with me being a young man, what can I do to like, help the black people around my community? Well, number one, you know, a couple of quick things. Start a study group, you know, just to get started. Start a study group, number one. Uh, number two, start some sort of a Pan-African uh, Boy Scout uh, mentorship program. I don't like to use the word mentor because uh, the reverse is torment and it relates to uh, the sodomy of boys in Greece and in Rome during the early period of European civilization. So mentor actually tormented that's why the word mentor in reverse is torment the mentor actually tormented the boys you know so that's why the word mentor is a very it's not a good word to use you know but we need to take young men you know under our wing and lead them and guide them in brotherhood and in fatherhood uh so that's another thing you can do i used to have a pan-african scouts program you know but the study group is good pan-african uh scouts program is good you know, but also, brother, we're going to be having a National Black Men's Convention. You know what I mean? And hopefully you'll come out with that because I want to bring all the black men together in eight major cities. Atlanta will probably be one where we sit down and talk and really strategize what we need to do as men without any women present. You know, uh, no women will be present, all brothers in the room. And we're going to work this thing out. So be on the lookout for that. I hope hopefully you follow at least one of uh, one of my social media pages. Oh, yeah, I follow you. Okay, good, good, because I post everything on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and it'll be on the website soon at drumarjohnson.com as well, but definitely, you know, we, we're about to make something happen, brother. It's the quadricentennial, 400 years. We owe it to our ancestors, brother, so we coming. We coming. Yeah, and lastly, I want to ask you what you think about Akon, you know, the singer from Africa. I like Akon. He's trying to do some things. He's trying to do the best he can. And you can never fault someone with doing the best that they can. My only concern with Akon yeah. is I don't want him to get overly reliant on Chinese funding and Chinese aid. I believe our brother is yeah. doing the right thing. I believe his heart is in the right place. But I'm concerned about the amount of credit that he's being given from the Chinese. I don't want the Chinese to use Akon as a strategy to get in and exploit Senegal. And I'll be actually be speaking in Senegal on August the 10th. So I just want to be, I just want us to be careful about that. So what do you feel about uh, Farrakhan's banning 
Uh, the ban on Farrakhan, uh, I think it was strategic. I don't know what it was for. I think it's about more than just silencing all of us. But I will say this. If they ban the minister uh, simply for expressing himself on Facebook, it's just a matter of time before the rest of us are gone. And I will say this. If they're going to wholesale ban all conscious voices, I support it. If they're going to wholesale ban all conscious voices, I'm going to support it. And I'm going to support it for two reasons. Number one, we should already have our own platforms to disseminate our message to the world. All of the intelligent black men and women that we have in the, in, uh, in the IT world, we should have our own Facebook. We should have our own Instagram. We should have our own Snapchat. We should have our own Twitter. We shouldn't even be on these European control platforms in the first place. So I support it. That's the first reason. The second reason I support it is I think black people are spending too much time on social network. Like I go live, right? But I, I barely go live. This is the first time I've done a seminar on Facebook in about two or three months, uh, separate from the black parent teleconferences. I haven't been on two or three months. And the reason for that, I'm building. We have two schools in Wilmington, Delaware, that we're trying to get ready. And I just think too much of good African mind and power and energy and intelligence is wasted because we spend our whole life on Facebook. Like there's people who never get off YouTube, never. They never get off Instagram. Like it's their whole life. They go to work, they eat, they take a shit and they get on, on Instagram. They work, they eat, they feed their kids, they put them to sleep, they get on YouTube. The, the most important resource in a revolution is time. The most important resource in a revolution is time. And we are not making the best use of our time. We are literally wasting thousands of hours a week on senseless YouTube. And the reason we think it's okay is because it's conscious chit chatter. It's conscious intellectual masturbation. You know, it's conscious conversation without an agenda. You know, it's the rebel without a cause. You see, it's the YouTube without a pause. And then when you look at the various YouTube personalities that are out there, they don't do any work in the community. No, no. Give me the top 10 black so-called woke YouTubers. You can't name one thing that they're doing in the community. I'm not talking about documentaries and debates. That's hustling. I'm talking about in the community. You can't name one thing that they're building or changing in the community for black. It's all talk for the monetization of YouTube money. That's all it is. And I just try with my example, I just try to be as much of a alternative to that as possible. And I think we've begun to give our people an alternative with the purchase of the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy, but we have to continue to go forward. No, and I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to read you a quote. I'm going to read you a quote. Actually, two. One is going to be from a European, another one going to be from an African, but this hangs on my wall. This is from Robert F. Kennedy, who was attorney general while his brother, John, was president. Of course, they were both assassinated. Neither one was friends of black people. I want to be clear. Neither one were friends of black people, but he said this, and this hangs on my wall. It's the only white quote on my wall, by the way. <laughs> and it says, quote, let no one be discouraged by the belief that there is nothing that one man or woman can do against the enormous array of the world's ills, against the misery and ignorance, injustice and violence. For you have the greatness to bend history itself. But each of us can work to change a small portion of the events. And in the total of all those acts will be written the history of this generation. It is from numberless diverse acts of courage and belief that human history is shaped. Each time a man stands up for an ideal or acts to improve the lot of others or strikes out against injustice, he sends forth a tiny ripple of hope. And crossing each other from a million different centers of energy and daring, those ripples of hope build a current which can sweep down the mightiest wall of oppression and resistance. The Honorable Marcus Garvey also said that we do not work to see our own personal liberation. 
We work for the liberation of generations of African children who have not yet been born. Mr. Garvey said that we work to see the victory experienced by our children because we may never see it. So I do not feel that my work is in vain. Just like I picked up the work of my blood relative, Frederick Douglass, who died 75 years before I was born. He died in 1895. I was born in 1974. I'm picking up where Frederick Douglass left off. You see, Marcus Garvey died, okay, 35 years before I was born. I'm picking up where they left off. And when I'm dead and gone, you know, 100 years from now, another young black man will come across my book and he will pick it up and he will read this book and he will say, who was this guy? Dr. Umar Johnson. You understand? And then he will go on YouTube if there's still a YouTube by, by then. You understand? And there might be a YouTube, but it won't have anything black and conscious on it. I can promise you that because the wave right now is to eliminate anything that is conscious off of the intel off of the World Wide Web because they are afraid that sooner or later black people are going to act on its consciousness. They're very afraid of what we may actually do with all of this. So they're trying to wipe it out. That helps explain, you know, part of uh, Minister Farrakhan's ban, you see. But um, I'm not discouraged, brother. I'm going to do what I can do because I know that the universe has a design and a plan, okay? And um, I believe we're going to win. And I believe we should be winning now. My, I, if you ask me, Dr. Umar, what bothers you the most? What bothers me the most right now is we should be winning because we have received every sign from the universe that this is our time. I mean, we had the Nat Turner eclipse. We just had another eclipse. We lived through a millennial. We lived through a new century. We're living through the 400 years, the quadricentennial of our people, Sojourn in America, which we're told, according to Hebrew prophecy in the Bible, should be the end of our oppression. I mean, if you just read between the lines, it is obvious that if the black man and woman decides to free themselves, the universe will come to our aid. The universe will come to our aid, but we're not doing anything to free ourselves. We're sitting on YouTube, making videos, talking black talk, not getting out in the streets. We're talking, running our mobs, and we're not building anything. And I don't say this to be arrogant. I don't say this to be arrogant at all. But I'm the only one of my generation, the only one to have produced an institution. You understand? I'm the only one in my generation to have produced an organization to change things for our children. You know, you understand? So... I'm not the be all and end all. I'm not everything. I still got a lot more to go. But if you're comparing me to these people on YouTube, I'm a yeah. God compared to them. Yeah. I'm an absolute yeah. God compared to them because none of them have done even 1% of the real work because I don't consider YouTube videos work. I don't consider documentaries work. I don't consider debates work. That is not work. Work is getting in the streets and organizing and fighting to change things. And if you are to compare me to that and compare me to them, I'm a god in the conscious community, and I say that with humility. Yep. Well, I just, that's all I want, Dr. Ma. I thank you. You're a great inspiration to me, and I hope God be with you. Thank you, black man. Stay stay strong, and I hope to see you at one of the black men conventions soon. Yes, I hope so, too. Will do, brother. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Brothers and sisters, I have kept you for too long. This is what I'm about to do. I'm about to tap out for a little while. And then I'm going to come back on Instagram. Peace and love, family. You live with Dr. Umar Johnson. With whom am I speaking? Hello? Peace and love. Brother Dane. Where you at, Brother Dane? Milwaukee? Yes, sir. What's going on in Kilwaukee right now? Listen, man. Trying to get it together, man. I've been watching the podcast. On the video cast, man. I just wanted to make sure I told my brother, man, peace and blessings. It's a beautiful thing that he's doing. I want to get, man, that black conference here in Milwaukee. I know he mentioned Chicago as the city. Hey, maybe, right. maybe maybe we do it in Milwaukee. Maybe we do it in Milwaukee. I had a brother hit me yesterday. He got access to a venue in Gary, Indiana. So we might even okay. do it in Gary. You know what I mean? But we're we going to make it pop. Yes, sir. And now, Gary ain't too far. I'll be traveling the pictures uh, up here. Uh, for a stuff up in that, so yeah, that ain't too far too. But we definitely need something, man, in our communities, man, because I, I agree, I totally agree. We don't hold our elected officials, man, uh, accountable. 
man, we, 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 the physical protection we were talking about earlier, man, I see it happening right in my neighborhood today, and I live on the east side of Milwaukee. They're building all these million-dollar condos and high-rides, and, then, and, and, and all our homeowners and our home renters man, being exercised out because of the property value going up. We can't even afford to live in our own community. I, I, I want to... black aldermen, man, uh, women and men, that's allowing this to happen, brother. You know what I know. Man? That's why we got to do these black men conventions, brother. We 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 gonna change the tide, man. We we gonna change the tide. The time is now, brother. I'm willing to risk what I got. Yes, you sir. know, I got two yes, beautiful sir. daughters. I got my mother. You understand? You know, it's a big yes, sacrifice for me. You know, but it's a big sacrifice for all of us. You understand? But I'm willing, man. You know, I go man, back I'm, I'm to. You, man. I got a wife, a mother, man. Two beautiful daughters. I just got a six month old man. Oh and, man, uh, congratulations. Young, young person, American, man. Yes, sir. If I got to shed my blood man. so your daughters can have a better life than we got, brother, I'm willing to do that. You understand? Yes, because we man, all come back again that anyway. Fight. And see, that's the thing. And I, another thing that I acknowledge you with, man. I tell the young the men that's really about something. We got a young activist around here named Tori Johnson, Tojo. But I told him, man, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't walking, man. I ain't marching no more. I'm ready to fight. Now we're gonna fight. We're going and that's it. I ain't violent, but it's something that's gonna have to be changed, and it's gonna be have to be intimate. I ain't sitting down. I ain't protesting. I'm gonna have to see something man, physical. That's True that. Because they ain't listening to that no more. True but, that. Yeah, see what they do. They killing our people, man. They True that. They They're not respecting us sitting down, fool by and no more. And you said bloodshed. I know about people that lost a lot of blood, man. Enough blood. Man. Well you know, said, bro. Well said. Yo, let me put this on your yes, mind, sir. black man, before I let you go. I ain't been to Milwaukee okay. in about four years, right? It's been about four years. Okay. I need a spot, bro, that can seat about 300, 300 to 400 in Milwaukee because it's time for me to come back to Milwaukee. I get a lot of love in Milwaukee, and it's been yes, a while. Uh, what, 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 what you think? You got any places in mind you could probably text me? Man, I'm, matter of fact, man, I'm a, I, you, I got the number right here. Yes, sir. I, 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 and again, it ain't about a religious thing. Um, because it's not about a religious tie to me. No, nah, I don't mind the churches, uh, brother, because that's all we own. Like, people always ask me, they say, yeah, people, yeah, that's cool. And um, some of the um, brothers from the uh, Mason Triple got a nice hall, man, that, uh, that uh, at least hold a few. And I know you talked about a few of these pastors. And yeah. Like, we could use the church. We could use the yeah, Mason right, Hall. Right. Whatever whatever we got to use, we could use that. And even this lady named uh, Valerie Carter, they, and which is white in our neighborhood, exploiting our people. These churches exploit our people more than the white men do today. And I'm Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Yes, so yeah, I do. I got a couple things right. that I consider at least that man, in, in mind, and because you mentioned the churches on the cat five. Yes, sir. And again, I'm not affiliated with them, but I ain't, I don't mind. You know, what I'm saying putting my pride to the side, going and seeing what they're talking about. But like I said, getting that information and making sure you get it too. Yeah. Yes, sir, black man. Stay in touch with me. Keep me posted. Shoot me a text. I sure will. Like I said, All right. I'll text you, I'll text you read it, I'll think about, and I'll let you know I, I'll let you know my progress with them as well. Will do, brother. Will do. All right, man. Keep up the fight, man. I really appreciate you, man. Thank I'm you. With you too. No I doubt. I last time you were here at UWM. Oh, um, yes, sir. Man, yes, sir. Man, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. But my people got to make it down there. But, I'm, man, like I said, I'm with, I'm with it, man. I'm, I'm with the fight, man. I appreciate brothers like yourself willing to sacrifice because I think that's another thing. We ain't got enough brothers willing to sacrifice. They, they material. You know what I'm saying? Or they, or they position the way they at for the real. Uh, and I saw brothers like yourself. Will do, anything brother. Anything I can do to be part of that, please, man, make sure I'm part of it, bro. Got you. Be blessed, yes, brother. Sir, yes, sir. All right, now. Blessed, man. All right, Peace now. Peace and love. Peace and love. Let me uh re reiterate my upcoming dates and projects as we prepare to wind down. I enjoyed spending this time with you. How long we been live? Facebook, how long we been live? <laughs> I don't know. But my next five lectures, next five. Selma, Alabama, Sunday, May 26. If you need the flyer, text me for it. Wednesday, May 29th, Seattle, Washington, Seattle City Hall, Judge Joe Brown, the Prince of Pan-Africanism. Sunday, June 2nd, Atlanta, Georgia, at the Aminola Afrocentric Griot Museum, okay, on Dargan Place. Wilmington, Delaware, June 8th and 9th, National Independent Black Parent Association. I hope y'all come to that. That's the most important one. Come to Wilmington and get trained to learn how to protect your child. Even if you don't start a chapter, come and learn how to protect your child. That's only three weeks from now. You only got three weeks. 
Y'all need to be there. Y'all call me. Y'all fill up my voicemail. You don't know what to do about your child's situation. Why not love your child enough to come and learn before the problem starts? Why not love your child enough to come and learn before the problem starts? Why not love your child enough to come and learn about the problem before it starts? June 8th and 9th, NIBPA, Wilmington, Delaware. If you're flying in, if you're flying in 20 minutes from Philadelphia International Airport, if you're flying in 20 minutes from Philadelphia International Airport, okay? And then Philadelphia, the last Sunday of June, we kicking off the summer in Philadelphia. We are kicking off the summer in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Sunday, June 30th, 4 o'clock, doors at 2, at the Garden of Prayer, 29th and Ridge. Okay, get your tickets at drumarjohnson.com. I also have my t-shirts for sale. The new line is up, clothing line. Get your unapologetically African t-shirts right now. We got a special Juneteenth promotion. Go to drumarjohnson.com. We got a special Juneteenth promotion right now. Hashtag African Family First. Hashtag AFF. Go to drumarjohnson.com. Click on the merchandise and then put in hashtag AFF and get your 15% discount. I want to see all my sisters in the lady tee at my next lecture. I want to see all my sisters wearing a Dr. Umar lady tee at the next lecture. Keep the donations coming. Speaking of donations, let's see what let's see how we live. Let's see how we live. Wow. Thank you, brothers and sisters. We have raised one thousand six hundred and fifty five dollars since we've been on the live today. Thank you. One thousand six hundred and fifty five dollars. If you can't hear me, go to Facebook, Dr. Umar Ifatunde. If you can't hear me, Instagram, go to Facebook. $1,655 today. Okay. $1,655 today. All right. Now I need to find out how I can see all the donors, right? How can I see everybody who donated? Here we go. Trisha Hunter, $25. Thank you, Sister Trisha. Sister Clarissa. Wait a minute. Oh, no. She requested money. How are you going to request? Sister Trisha, $25. Sister Sonia, $10. Sister Marlene, $50. Brother Gary, $10. Sister Listeria, $20. Brother Alden, $20. Montrese, $10. Larry C., $20. Karana Pinkins, $20. Sanford Johnson, $10. Tanit Lang, $50. Terry Jr., $5. Khalil Amon, $10. Ibrahim Freeman, $5. Rasta Josiah, $9. Christopher, $20. Thomas, $5. Khalil Amon, $2. Jamal Thomas, $20. Tashana Ashford, $2. Kareem, $5. Kilo, $20. Ryan Brown, $25. BBIC, one dollar asia five dollars chris carnegie 25 elaine 25 maya 100 avery roll ten dollars brandon cherry ten dollars kiera warren shout out to sister kiera twenty dollars chris carnegie 25 armani brown twenty dollars oluatosin ten dollars justin parker three dollars terry jr ten dollars lucy charles ten dollars will hamina twenty dollars renee twenty five dollars christina ten dollars demario one dollar Morgan five dollars, Joseph fifty dollars, Anthony ten dollars, Brandon thirty dollars, the one twenty five dollars, Felicia thirty dollars, Frank twenty dollars, Anissa ten dollars, Brandon ten dollars, Jamel five dollars, Renee twenty five dollars, Jesse five dollars, Indisha twenty dollars, Cordell five dollars, Roscoe said dollars, brother Jeffrey, donor of the day, five hundred dollars. Ebony fifty dollars, Tony five dollars, Nelson ten dollars, Reva one dollar, dollars twenty dollars. Flyers five dollars, Corey twenty dollars, Pamela twenty five dollars, the Mario five dollars, Inez fifty dollars, Milton one hundred dollars. Thank you, brother Milton one hundred. Avery ten dollars, Marcus fifty dollars, 
Javed, $5. Jumping Bunnies, $100. Aretha, $50. Cortez, $2. Eric, $7. Austin, $5.66. Dustin, $10. Patterson, $200. Shout out to Patterson. Natasia, $5. Kevin, $25. Freddie Womack, $51. Shama Yomans, $10. Simba, $1. Lex, $20. Sharon Thomas, $25. Kevin Cooper, $5. Taniqua, $100. Thank you, Taniqua. Danielle, $5. Empress, $60. Beatrice, $20. Karen, $8. Dollars, $20. The Great T.I. Inc., $20. Bernard, $20. Kenya, $20. Anthony, $5. Felicia, $20. Najija, $50. Thank you, Queen. Rasheen, $5. Leon, $50. Jabbar, $50. Marquin, $10. Mizzle, $10. Renee, $20. Deontay, $5. John, $50. Stanley, $20. Adrena, $10. Dempsey, $50. Trayon, $75. Thank you, Trayon. Key, $2. James, $300 on April 29th. James Barrett, thank you. Lex, $20. Nelton, $5. Leon, $50. Sabrina Johnson, $50. Stephen, $20. Steve Harvey, $20. Was that the real Steve Harvey that gave me $20? I don't think so. Marcus, $20. Anthony, a dollar. Connor, $50. Pedro Mendoza, my Afro-Latino brother. Thank you, brother. $50. We're going to have them Afro-Latino boys at the school, too. Shout out to the Afro-Ricans and Cubans and Dominicans. Ade, $15. Nick, $20. Nakia, $100. Shout out to Sister Nakia, $100. John Miller, $20. Fritz, $100. Thank you, Fritz. Uh, National Conservative something, $10. Thank you. Yvonne, $25. Anthony, $10. Anthony, $24. Peter Campbell, $30. Thomas, $20. Anthony, $5. Shayla, $25. Marquise Blue, highest cash app donor so far, $3,000. Marquise Blue, $3,000. Shout out to Marquise. Shout out to Marquise. He's the highest donor so far. Cash app, FDMG history. Brother Jeff, $500, the second highest donor. And we got a bunch of 100s. Anthony, $5. Steven, $16. Thomas, $25. Devon, $100. Osai, $1. Bobby, $3. Anthony, $5. Anthony, $15. Mizzle, $15. Nathaniel, $20. Saeed, $20. Balanji, $20. Aunt Dobbs, $20. Z Zakia, $25. Thank you, Sister Zakia, who first brought me out to uh, the Dayton area. Derek, $10. Fred, $25. Kenya, $20. Jonathan, $20. Rochelle Muhammad, Salam Alaikum, Queen, $5. Dallas Webb, $20. Marlon, $20. Joss, $10. Antoinette, $25. Anthony, $5. Willie, $10. Anthony, $10. Okay, Nicole, $250. Jamika Harris, $50. Anthony, $8. Tavares, $30. Cameron, $25. Chris Scott, $100. Johnny, shout out to Johnny, $5. I'm going to see you in Ghana, Johnny. I think you're still going with us to Ghana. He went with us last year. Shawnee, Sister Shawnee out of Baltimore. Thank you, love. Appreciate you. $50 from Sister Shawnee. Draley to God, $50. John Cummins, $100. Sister Felicia, $30. Renee, $25. Terrence, $20. Victor, $10. Jose, $5. Khalil, $15. Kaye Muhammad, Salam Alaikum, $15. Patterson, $200. Orlando, $20. Cameron, $25. Barry, $50. Sister Shannon Hill, my Tulsa, Oklahoma, Oklahoma City host, Sister Shannon, $25. When you reach out about Oklahoma and Oklahoma and Tulsa, Oklahoma City. That's Sister Shannon right there. Take care of her. She's a real good sister. Alex is $10. Pedro is $50. Rodney, $50. Kenya, $5. Dwayne, $25. Bricks, $10. Amber, $10. Jason, $25. Renee, $25. Nasia, $50. Kenya, Jordan. It's so many of y'all. Thank you for the love. Thank you for the love. Thank you for the love, y'all. Keep them coming. We trying to raise a million dollars. If you ain't made your donation, make your donation. Donate to the school. Shockumentary. If you live in Maryland, Delaware, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, or D.C., Maryland, Delaware, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, or D.C., we're going to start interviewing for the documentary next month. Text me if you have a shockumentary. One paragraph or email me a page. Text me a paragraph about your testimonial. It could be about special ed, Ritalin, ADHD, racism, juvenile detention, genocide suicide retention uh disrespect from school staff towards black children and parents if you have a good story that our people need to know about 
This is going to be the most significant school to prison pipeline documentary ever done. The most significant school to prison pipeline documentary ever done. You could be a teacher cop, probation officer, community activist. If you have a story, if you have a story, text me or email me, Dr. Umar Johnson at yahoo.com or 215-989-9858, 215-989-9858. Selma, next Sunday. Seattle, next Wednesday. Atlanta, two Sundays. Philadelphia, July 30th. Charlotte, July 6th. Hempstead, New York, July 14th. It's going down. The Prince is here. Donate, donate, donate. One love.